Hi everyone, welcome to probably the last session of the day before we head to booth crawl and poster sessions. Um, what are we going to talk about here? So as you might know, this is the steering committee of Kubernetes and this is the maintainer track session. So we'll be going to talking about some updates from what we have been doing in the past few months and something which is a surprise, which is related to the title. We'll come to that later on in the next part of the presentation. Uh, so I'm Nabarun. Uh, I'm Paco Xu from Dark Cloud and uh, uh, I'm a newly elected <laughs> member of the steering. Thank you. Um, so the steering committee is a member of, uh, is a body of seven people. And the people are spread across the globe from a lot of different companies. And uh, the committee usually goes through an election every year where almost half of the committee uh, rolls out uh, or changes every year and is up for election. Half of the seats change. Um, before you go into what we do, uh, why do we need this com committee even? The reason is we are very big. We have almost 85,000 plus contributors contributing Kubernetes in the lifespan of the project. Currently, we have almost 1,200 org members. We used to have a lot uh, until a few months back. But uh, what we aim to do is we aim to prune org members every year who are inactive in the last pruning duration. Um, we have almost like 350 plus repos and 30 plus community groups. Uh, community groups are essentially SIGs, working groups, uh, and committees like the steering committee. Um, we are the fifth largest open source project by developer velocity, but last year I think we were second just after the kernel. Um, enough about why do we exist, but what does the steering do? So we are essentially the governing body of the Kubernetes project making non-technical decisions about the project. And we also oversee the operations of the other community groups and if they're conforming to the charter that they decided to work on. And we also uh, decide on if the updates to their charters are uh, good for the long-term sustenance of the community. Um, we also handle things related to financial planning. We tackle things like uh, if any of the groups requires money for, let's say, giving out some swags or subscription to some service which will help them in fulfilling their work. And we define the project values and stru structure. You might have seen the Kubernetes project values that is upheld by the steering committee. Now a few updates uh, since KubeCon NA in Chicago. It's just been like three months, uh, but we have progressed on a few things that we identified are very important for the community. One of them being annual reports. So these reports are supposed to be submitted by each community group every year to signify the health of the project, to give updates about what they did in the past year. Now, until last year, there were almost eight or nine questions of them, like most of them could have been generated uh, data, like how many caps did you work on? What caps did you work on? What is the status of the cap? What did you ship in the last year? Or how many contributors were there to your subprojects? And uh, in last year, what we saw is, uh, we saw that eight groups didn't file the report, whereas 22 groups did file the report. Now this made us go back to the drawing board and think, what is wrong? Why aren't one third of our groups not even submitting the annual reports? And what, what can we do to make the process better for them? So we went ahead, talked with uh, the community members, the chairs and tech leads, and we talked amongst our, ourselves, the steering committee, with the goal of making the annual reports better. <clears throat> so what we did is we collated or coalesced all the questions down to just two important questions and moved out all the generated content out into like separate things that we can generate any day if we want any community metrics. So the questions are, the first being, what work did the SIG do that should be highlighted? It may be something which is in caps already, or it may be something which is not captured by caps. 
because caps only hold record for technical decisions and technical stuff inside the sub project non technical things usually don't show up in uh, kubernetes uh, the uh, kubernetes enhancement proposals so it's important for the six to highlight the work that they did across the year and the next point is probably the more important one what are the areas that the community groups feel that they need most help with this has like far reaching implications um first if the signal that we get to know like which uh, areas are understaffed which areas have less number of maintainers and which need more uh, curation or some more directed um, efforts like mentorship groups to grow more owners or grow more contributors in that area and this also helps uh, people who make decisions in companies to staff open source contributions by making sure that the areas which are understaffed and if they care about those areas in their products they can staff those areas and make the sustainance better uh for the groups if you are a chair or a tech lead two important dates uh may 1st to file the pr to update the annual reports for review and we need to merge them by may 22nd uh if you are a if you are not a chair or tech lead and if you contribute to any of the community groups in kubernetes i would highly recommend you to go ahead and help the chairs and tls build that report we have had very good examples in the last year where contributors who are not uh, the leads of those groups actually write the reports with the help of the leads and that also makes uh, them very good candidates for knowing more context in the groups and the future leaders of the groups essentially so if you want to grow that's also one ways that you can contribute now while reviewing your sigs or working groups uh, if you're a sig i would highly request everyone to consider like adopting sub project leads this is a new role that uh, new governance role that we introduced last year to ensure that there is a good stepping stone from a contributor to someone who owns code in a sub project to a tech lead now the sub project leads you can you can look at the sub project leads when you want someone else to step in as a technical lead in your sig and that is very important uh and if i put annual reports um one thing that we did was um going back to the context of financial planning uh there were two uh reports that we usually maintain the steering report and the funding report uh the funding report usually used to have uh tickets for like a uh, request of resources for example if you want to uh get uh, subscription to a service like buffer you would request like oh i need xyz amount per month for this or if you are a sub project or some area of kubernetes where you need infra resources you can ask there and then we essentially like forward the request to cncf through service desk uh now what we are seeing is having two different repos really did not make much sense uh it's better to consolidate both into the same so you consolidated funding into steering so if you in future need any help with resourcing uh you have to create a issue in steering now i talked about the elections and how do we rotate every year elections are coming up in september just before kubecon north america i would highly recommend anyone who wants to make a difference or who sees that they can make a difference to the project come and uh, raise their hands uh, for the elections write a manifesto what they want to do and just participate in our process that's one of the great ways to uh, provide an impact to the community now coming back to the title of where we started like where is where is the project going it's the 10th year and uh, we wanted to basically know what did our emeritus steering committee members thought about their whole journey from day 0 of kubernetes to day 10 and what they feel about the future what what is going to come in kubernetes or what, what do they see kubernetes going towards in the next decade so we asked like a few concise questions and thanks to all of our emeritus uh steering committee members for uh responding back and answering our questions and giving us the time and the space uh, to
to actually know better what they intended Kubernetes to be and if they still think like that is the goal. And if it's changed, what's their goal for the next decade? Now, we collated all those answers into a few themes, like, I don't know, like eight or 10 themes. We'll just go through like some timelines of themes, starting with the unexpected success of the project. And what did they think, what do they think about it right now? So Tim mentions uh, that the most significant thing right now is the sheer scale of the community and how big it has become, which is also emphasized by Paris, who mentioned that it was probably one of the first projects to reach 10,000 contributors, and we are at 80, 86,500 contributors last week. Maybe we have grown by 100 more as we see the velocity by now. And it has become grand. And because of the sheer scale of Kubernetes, we have, and the composability of Kubernetes, we built a grand ecosystem around it. You are here for KubeCon and CloudNativeCon. So one, on one side there is Kubernetes, and on the other side there is the whole cloud-native landscape of how many, I, I keep forgetting, I think it's 180 plus projects at this point um, in the CNCF, and everything is built around Kubernetes. So this is what has been built, and probably nobody expected it to be get this big back in like 10 years back. And with that, we have a worldwide spanning community with KubeCons happening this year in four different locations. I think this is the first year when KubeCon is happening in North America, Europe, China, and India, who is, which is showing up as the new entrant to the KubeCon org. Or. Now, with the unexpected success, there's a cost. What is it? Almost half of the internet depends on Kubernetes. No pressure, right? Um, might break a release or two. The internet might break, maybe. We'll see. Um, having said that, it is also critical to make sure that because of the popularity of the project, things don't break. and we ensure things like software supply chain security or when, whenever you deploy apps to Kubernetes, things are fine. When you run critical workloads on Kubernetes, things should run as usual. Um, but there's a positive point. We will adapt to run workloads of the next decade. Uh, we started with like stateless applications, then went to stateful applications, then batch workloads, periodic workloads, HPC workloads, event-driven workloads, and the new age of AI workloads. But with the hidden success and the cost of popularity, uh, there's a hidden cost too. And more so in the context of steering, it is hard work. And it's not at all fun work. It is, at many times it's grunt work, uh, be it uh, uh, like, I talked about the annual reports. 34 or 40 groups come up with the annual reports, collating them to a annual report called CNCF annual report. Thanks to Paris and Bob, we did see that in 2022. Um, I mean, many of us have used that annual report to convince our bosses to fund us to work on open source, not just this KubeCon trip or anything, but day-to-day -day activities doing things like contributes, doing things like steering, doing things like release. But it's not fun work at all. It's really hard work. And I thank everyone who has been doing this for years and years. Now, the staffing situation, right? We have, the common theme has been funding of open source. But how many do fund open source? We have talked about this extensively in the Contributor Summit as well, in both the AMAs, from the steering committee as well as the CNCF staff. The main trend which is, see, which is being seen right now is, since everything is like a well-oiled machine, Kubernetes releases are consistently coming every four months. Now, people have, like, people have decreased their understanding or appreciation of what this machinery is. And what we've seen across time is, the staffing is reducing over time. 
we can see that in dev stats very easily that the number of unique contributors across time had reached a peak back in i would say like 2021 or 2022 uh, pardon the numbers but it is decreasing right now and that is a grave situation and that is a cost to us and we need to make sure that we don't uh, like go beyond the criticality where the community will just break now some challenges what what were the challenges across this 10 years and some of the challenges will also be relevant for the next decade paris mentions that being the only woman for a while and not having her voice heard was one of the big problems and even if you saw the current committee members you would see a common pattern this needs to be changed or we need more people from different set of backgrounds to come and join the community to show interest in the community the steering committee as well as the kubernetes community so that people from everywhere feel heard and they can put their voices equally out in the open um the next up uh clayton mentions that things will keep on continuing to be hard and i think this is the general theme uh things are not going to be not going to get easy anytime soon but what we need to do is make kubernetes easier to consume make sure that people are able to use kubernetes time to time um and there's one more thing about community is once people rotate out of the community often the context gets lost it's very important for us to keep documenting things that run the community it's important to keep things updated for example um when i was the release lead of kubernetes 1.21 things were drastically different from what they are right now and when i was there i am pretty sure that things were very different when people were releasing or uh, josh was releasing kubernetes before 1.10 josh i believe that was that or one oh wow so so the importance of evolution of documentation and keeping context is very important things that things change things keep on changing and we should not lose track of knowledge experience and culture as well what joe mentions is on a different tangent as well too many choices when you consume kubernetes there are a lot of things lot of options that you have but have we standardized on something when i was talking to joe he mentioned that things like qvdm which made cluster bootstrapping a standard we should have like brought it up to a much bigger level and coalesce on all the different 100 different ways to bring up a cluster 100 different ways to consume kubernetes what if there is a standardized way and with change direct mentions that we have to be patient with everything uh, i remember a sentence from christoph who says like we have to take a beat of the situation whenever we face a problem when there is a problem we should pause sit down and think like what the community thinks about this take a step back and then try to solve it and finally i think if any company or if any person is sitting here who consumes kubernetes and has been con consuming kubernetes over time upgrades is a pain upgrade i believe like there was a report from some analytics company who who mentioned that the major users of kubernetes when we released 1.26 were still like 1.22 or 1.21 um i don't remember the exact numbers or exact versions but it was like when we release certain version the most used is still like minus 4 or minus 5 which probably are already out of date because we support only 3 at a time and that's all about the challenges and i'll hand over to paco to talk about the next part of the presentation uh, also i i, I want to uh, t uh, take a take a break for the upgrade because it really hurts many users uh, years ago when we released a new version uh, uh they asked me uh, what's the new feature uh, what, what new features and uh, they are very curious about what the new versions but uh, recently i find many users ask uh, when we release a new release they, they ask me why 
<laughs> when you release Nisap Regrets, there's a lot of work, and uh, they even they want no uh, action required upgrades, not 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 the current one, I think. And also, Jordan has mentioned that in last uh, case about uh, in Europe about that we uh, want users to. Not, uh, not have to look in, uh, look the details of the change logs uh, and upgrade, uh, but it is so hard for us, I think. And uh, so there are challenges here. Uh, and also, we build the LTS team uh, uh, group to to work on how to uh, make the this better experience for users to upgrade. And, and uh, there's many talks and uh, also a. Uh, it will take many efforts from our maintainers. And here's the maintainer uh, burnout. And uh, firstly, uh, the biggest challenge here uh, is that uh, mentioned uh, uh, Nikita that uh, many employees, uh, employers, to found contributors. Uh, I think uh, uh, recent several months, uh, some some of the maintainers. Uh, did not uh, uh, leave the community uh, for some for job reason, and, and this is uh, quite a big problem, I think. And uh, and also uh, maintainers at the earlier days they can uh, they can know everything about the project, but now uh, it is bigger and bigger, and uh, not all maintainers can know everything, and uh, so we use uh, there are still so many sticks. And uh, sometimes we need to work uh, cross sticks, and uh, and uh, things become worse now. I think. And uh, for a new beginner, uh, when he want to know uh, more about Kubernetes, he find it so hard, and uh, so many things is updating, and uh, uh, to catch up with those, those changes uh, is is very challenging. Uh, and also, we have we still have a lot of work to be done. Uh, mentioned by Joy, and uh, and also uh, he asked a lot of questions and uh, thinks there there's many things to do. And uh, uh, for cluster mean, it is still harder to uh, than it really needs to be. So there's a lot of work we can uh, done. Uh, and uh, uh, also Clayton mentioned that uh, there's uh, the. I think this is the baseline that we, we should keep the uh, SLOs and uh, something uh, like that. It's, this is very important. Uh, and Deems also mentioned that uh, we can, uh, we should make uh, leave it uh, sustainable and uh, in better hands than you in edited form. And uh, uh, later we will talk about the. Uh, so, so next, uh, uh, you can listen to Teams and uh, Teams uh, Hawkins talk uh, to, uh, tomorrow, I think. Uh, and this is about uh, maintainers, uh, current maintainer status. Uh, uh, another uh, uh, part is the clear boundaries. Uh, uh, first, uh, currently Kubernetes call is uh, so important and uh, we should make it a uh, sustainable call. Uh, uh, Team Pepper is uh, uh, mentioned that. And also, uh, uh, we, we need to define a clear boundary for a uh, lens for, uh, between the core Kubernetes and the six sponsored new sub projects. And also, we, we update the charts about the uh, sub project leads. And this may help to uh, our sub projects leads to grow and uh, be recognized, uh, and uh, uh, and we can uh, in the sub projects you, uh, contributors can be very uh, 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 new ideas can can test in, uh, new ideas there. Uh, this, this will help the community to grow, and. Uh, uh, this one, I think, this is the uh, we, we should, what we should do, and is the most important part. Is we uh, people is the most important part of our community, uh, 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 contributors, and also users. Uh, we should uh, make sure everyone's voice uh, was heard and respected, uh, mentioned by uh, Clinton, and uh, we should remember that we should give focus to 
people and uh, find uh, empathy, uh, find ways to uh, trans uh, translate and bridge the cross conflicts. Th uh, this is quite important. Uh, uh, and the Kubernetes is, is always be, uh, has always been about the people uh, and uh, 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 other uh, uh, member, uh, previous member. Uh, all, all, I think most of them are uh, so respect every uh, contributions, big or small. Uh, and uh, uh, I think the most important part is also, uh, is what uh, because. Uh, uh, things change every day, and uh, uh, f for example, uh, now the AI is uh, uh, is the new trend, and uh, so uh, the steering co committee will not decide where the project go, but but the contributors uh, will we, we, uh, we, we will make it possible to go where the contributors want to. Th that that's very very important. Not, not I think not only contributors, but also community users. And uh, we should thank everyone about uh, uh, involving in the community and uh, uh, doing things. Uh, this really helps us. Uh, and uh, listen to the community, but uh, and also we, we need to hold true to the core values. Uh, this, this is uh, the most important part. Uh, and uh, how to gain that? Uh, we we have several uh, we have done some something like the weekly meeting. Uh, uh, new users and contributors can show up there to uh, share your uh, share your ideas and uh, also uh, this is this is quite important because uh, when we do the annual report uh, this uh, before this is quite important part of the and and, and also we have the shadow programs and uh, currently not only. Uh, risk team and also PR and also other uh, parts. Uh, this, this will help new contributors to grow. Uh, and uh, we also ask about uh, the next decades, but uh, uh, we cannot predict the, the future. Uh, so uh, uh, here are some some, uh, some ideas. Uh, first, we uh, this is asked by uh, before about uh, do we have the plan for. V2, but I think uh, until now I don't know any any uh, process about that. Uh, I think it is good, <laughs> and, and so we will keep uh, V1 uh, going. Yeah, uh, and uh, also we uh, uh, in the new next decade, uh, uh, we we should still uh, do the right thing uh, like before. Uh, I think this is the keystone technology here and. Uh, also, we should focus on the distributed system developers and uh, empower more people. Uh, maybe uh, 10 times or uh, 100 times, but uh, uh, who knows? I I'm not sure uh, about that. But, uh, but I think uh, uh, AI will help us, and uh, we may, uh, as, we, as the user group grows so, so much, I think we may do that in the future. <laughs> And AI is a new new wave, and uh, you can see uh, many things related to AI in Kubecon. And uh, in today's keynote, uh, Nikita mentioned that uh, I, I find this this picture is very interesting. The AI is 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 the center of the universe <laughs> now, and and uh, AI is a new wave, and uh, we're good to say the infestation in this area is also in KBS. Uh, uh, Kubernetes. Uh, to to argue uh, this, we should also consider building more connections with other communities like uh, uh, Linux Foundation, and we should co uh, collaborate with them to make the wave uh, larger. Uh, and Clinton also mentioned that uh, Kubernetes is uh, can be a big part of that. Yes, I think. Uh, and uh, this is an uh, opportunity to improve those uh, AI jobs on Kubernetes platform, on the platform. Yeah, the, the big opportunity for us. Also a challenge. So, uh, any questions? Uh, uh, I, I think uh, uh, other students may share some comments.
about. <laughs> nah. Okay, so um, one more uh, the questions I have is, um, have any decisions of the steering committee ever been challenged and how do you handle that? <laughs> Bob? <laughs> Honestly, it's, it is quite difficult. Um, we, we do essentially try and, and, you know, get together and make sure that we can speak publicly with one voice. So we might be, you know, slow to reply on, on some things, but, you know, it's not always the case. And honestly, like, I don't think we've had, like, two situations that are exactly alike so it's it's really just trying like to do our best and and you know work from there uh, so even even internally when we try to make a decision we have a rule to have like majority consensus uh, so that we agree on some decisions and even when we try to vote on a decision we keep a very long like soap time in the community so that everyone can come in and comment so that we understand what is the vibe of the majority. We keep the discussions in public, we keep the discourse in public so that the community as a whole can have enough time to come and communicate to us their concerns. So far we have had only, as Bob said, like one or two situations where, or probably like, more than that, okay. Oh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. yeah, that's why we have a private uh, meeting and also another public meeting. <laughs> yeah, uh, coming to the meetings, like we have uh, a monthly public meeting and a monthly uh, bi-weekly public meeting and a bi-weekly private meeting. In the private meetings, we try to discuss any of the stuff which can create conflicts and try to come to a consensus so that it's publicly consumable. And uh, anyone can come to us and uh, raise their concerns in the public meetings or uh, mail us in steering at the rate kubernetes.io or even privately let us know their concerns in steering private at the rate kubernetes.io or on slack so we're available through three mechanisms That's, that was a nice question though any more questions it's very hard question maybe a stupid question what uh, what happens when a work group doesn't file the annual report? What happens to these eight work groups? Um, for most, nothing happens. Um, for some, we, for all of them who don't file, we try to see like what went wrong or what is going wrong. If they have less contributors, we try to like analyze the situation, take a beat of the situation and decide accordingly. For example, we have had some working groups in the past one year that we saw probably are not relevant or they have uh, sufficed with their goal because working groups are supposed to be not perpetual. They have a goal. If their goal is done, they should spin down. Or if they're relevant in some other circle, probably they should move there. For example, uh, IoT Edge that is more relevant at the CNCF level because it's not just about Kubernetes, but about other projects as well. And we ask them to move to like the CNCF level. So that's when like we archive working groups. Uh, we have archived SIGUI uh, in the past year, I guess, no? not yet? Yeah, but we were discussing about this that because that is not very relevant anymore, we might archive that. Um, so we do take a look at, uh, and. Even before this discussion comes into the picture, we try to ping 50 times, 100 times, DMs publicly, at, so that we get like optimum attention. Any more, any more questions? Thank you all for attending and 
Danke. Danke.